Hi, welcome to my channel. I've lost 180 pounds with keto, carnivore, and counting calories. Don't forget to check the description to this video. I have links to some of my popular videos, a link to my Amazon account for a lot of things that you all ask about. Don't forget I have a bunch of playlists on the homepage of this channel. Thank you. Monday morning weigh-in. I have people ask me and they're like, you know, are you trying to lose weight or where are you doing? And no, you know, my actual goal was 168. And so, um, uh, that I wound up at one point I was 158. So right now I'm just kind of just trying to figure out this whole maintenance thing. So, um, I, I, of course you gotta weigh in from time to time and kind of check on yourself and, um, you know, see how you're going. So that's what I do. I uh, check in and it's kind of my accountability thing. <clears throat> Tell you what I need accountability for. <laughs> is that hoarder's room. I need to show you all that again. Oh, there I got a couple boxes in there and a few things just kind of thrown in there, but it's okay. It's still, it's still okay. But um, anyway, yeah. So um, yeah, I just, um, I just touch base with the scale and I'm just trying to figure out this maintenance thing to see how it can work without having to to um, weigh and measure every single bite. Uh, but that that is why I weigh and measure the uh, main foods, you know, like the meat that I do eat, except for the pork or the frog legs. I didn't weigh those. So <clears throat> when I was cleaning out my hoard the other day, I found my old trapper keeper. This thing got me through a lot of class time. And uh, when I opened it, look, it has a nice little pocket and you pull this down and the little thing slides out. That's pretty innovative for back then. Anyway, this is my ninth grade stories. Let me just read this story to you, hold on. Evidently, I wrote a story about my mom. It's called, My Mom the Teeny Bopper. It's hard to believe my mom was a teen with the same curfew and same dating age as I have. I figured they had to be home by nine in those olden days. Judith Ann McElmurray, my favorite mom, was born March 15, 1942. She started school in 1948. In first grade, she had to stand in the corner because she had the whole class play Jack in the Box while the teacher was out of the room, but one of the kids told on her. She met her first boyfriend in the fifth grade. His name was David. She had some boys hold him down so she could kiss him. <laughs> Judith grew up in, I'm not going to say, at her school there were no, her school, at her school, there were no women's sports. Judith, Judith was a B-plus average student and was on the honor roll all four years of high school. Her favorite teachers were Coach So-and-So, Miss So-and-So. Her favorite classes were music and bookkeeping. <clears throat> she was in the following clubs, English Honor Society, National Honor Society, and Pet Club. Judith's curfew was 12 p.m. I bet that was a.m. She This was ninth grade, remember. She bent her curfew once in a while. Her parents fussed but never grounded her. Her only outside job was babysitting. She graduated from, or as they call it, in 1960. She graduated from SEMO University in 1963. She married Nick Least, my dad, on August 19, 1962. Fashions in the late 50s and early 60s were pedal pushers, like our beach pants. They were they wore sweaters with with a separate pin-on collars. They wore saddle shoes, not as clunky as the ones now, <clears throat> with a buckle on the back. The popular singers were Elvis, Pat Boone, and Connie Francis, but her favorite group was the Kingston Trio. Judy also prefers to be called now, Judy, as she prefers to be called now, never owned a car till she was married. Her best friends were Rosemary, Dora, and Marilyn. They are still friends, although they do not live close together. After all these years, Mom said, oh, after all these years, Mom said, I guess life has turned out 
the way I've always wanted it, husband and children. I guess she is not such a, I guess she is not, it's hard to read this because in ninth grade, my grammar was not too great. I guess she is not as much as a fuddy-duddy as I thought she was. She is an okay mom at heart. I think she really understands more than we give her credit for. Under all that picky ex exterior is a sweet teeny bopper trying to get out. This must have been like my first draft because, man, there's like, but we didn't really, I mean, there were typewriters, but our version of typewriters, they were not electronic. And um, you push and the little thing would pop up and then go down, and then pop up and go down. So sometimes you push a button, and it would take a minute for it to pop up the next one. But anyway, so there's a lot of spaces that weren't there, and it's funny looking back and seeing this ninth grade, so I would have been 14? No, 15. I'd have been 15 because I could drive as sophomore. So at 15 years old, that's what I wrote about my mama. That's funny. Okay, well, let's get back to the food. Um, what time is it? I'm kind of starting to get hungry. It's seven fifteen. I'm getting a little bit hungry. Let's go find something to eat. This morning we are gonna have us. Oh yeah, that's good and hot. <coughs> we are gonna have us a good breakfast. I've got my tallow melting, and we're gonna saute up some um, white onions. Go. Get back in there. We're going to start off with sauteing our white onions. I'll let these go for a couple minutes and I'll get back with you. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of these real bacon pieces to them. They're kind of starting to brown a little bit. I don't know, about two tablespoons, maybe. <clears throat> it kind of brings the bacon pieces back to life when you when you do heat them up and with something and let them absorb some of the moisture. Um, they're basically almost like dehydrated. And so by cooking them with the onions, it kind of brings some life back to them. Gives it more of that bacony flavor. So I'm going to saute these up. Actually, no, nope. I'm going to go ahead and add in my, a few peppers. Not a lot, just a few. I'm going to saute that up. And actually, yeah, actually, 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 um, I'm going to go ahead. I wanted to fry up some rutabaga with it this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Just kind of scoop the onions off to the side. These are parboiled rutabaga I had in the freezer. So last night before I went to bed, I pulled the little container out. And I just set it out of my refrigerator and freezer. And just set it out and to, uh, I left it out overnight to kind of let it defrost. Because it was frozen solid. I knew I would not be able to use it this morning. But I knew I wanted it. So. Hang on. I cut some of these pieces in half. But they didn't go in half very well. I cut them. They just didn't come apart. There we go. Now, 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 now. We're just going to let these go. Are you in half? No. So we're going to let these go for a little bit. And meanwhile, let the onions and peppers kind of sit over here to the side, doing their thing too. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. I'm going to go ahead and add some salt now. A little bit of pepper, just to the, yeah, just a little bit of pepper. <coughs> Still got another minute left. Stir these around a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to see about flipping my rutabaga and see if it's ready to flip. And it could have been left alone. 
a little longer. They're starting to brown a little bit on the other side. cover back for another couple minutes here. It's smelling good, y'all. It's smelling good. I think I'm going to leave the lid off now <clears throat> while we uh, see if we can get them. Yeah. Starting to brown and crisp up on that other side here. I'm going to flip these and, uh, and I'll come back. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the onion and peppers. They're starting to get a little too brown here, which is fine. I'll eat it. I don't care. Face to the rutabagas. All right, I'll be back when it's done. When I am patient with them, they actually can brown up. I'm just not overly patient with them half the time. So I'll put the rutabaga on here, and then we'll get some eggs going. Let's get our eggs cracked. Hang on, I'm going to run this grease all the or tallow, run it all across to make sure it gets all over. Cover it for two minutes. Y'all already know. I guarantee you some of y'all were fussing at me. And that water is evaporated. I'm gonna, we got another minute, but I'm gonna. There. All right, see you in one minute. While the eggs are finishing up, I have a cheese wedge. This is um, the plain light laughing cow cheese. I'm going to put it right there. And when the egg's done, I'm going to plop it right on top of it. Trying to get the whole egg. Some of it's broke and some of it isn't. So... Because that egg is hotter than I want to eat, I'm going to go ahead and clean my skillet. I deglaze it first, kind of run my pancake turner all through it. And then when I go to scrub it, there's nothing stuck on it. So now I'll wash it and then put it back on here to dry for 10 minutes. By the way, Mac cast iron skillet is the one thing I do wash by hand. Alright, now I just let it sit for 10 minutes to dry after I wash it out. And then it'll be ready to hang up when it cools off. Still have my protein coffee going. And See that runny in the eggs? This one's a little runny, not as much runny because this one broke. But I'm gonna mush it up. They're laying on top of that cheese wedge. So I'm gonna mush it up and mix that cheese in there with the eggs. 
Have me some cheesy eggs. I could put the cheese in the cast iron skillet with the eggs, but I don't like cleaning it. It makes it more gummy, and it's easier just to clean up whenever it's just the eggs themselves. And we know I'm all about less, less work. So, like I said, today's Monday, and we're closed today, and it's funny. I used to think I'd be a good stay-at-home wife or stay-at-home mom or whatever. Nope. I miss my co-workers. They know. I get tired of looking at them by Friday. But come Sunday, they know I'm missing them again. I've told them that. I said, I love to see y'all come in and I love to see y'all go. So, uh, it's true. I miss my team during the week ends. Except Saturdays. I don't miss anybody on Saturday. That's my day. Saturday is Terry's day. Pepper and onions are good. I know the egg and cheese is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Try this rutabaga. Yep. I went fancy for y'all. I bought a plate. Or I brought a plate. I actually had a plastic container out and I'm like, Terry, be an adult. Adulting is hard, y'all. I don't like adulting. But for you, I'll try. I'll try. Alright, well now I'm going to mix it all together except for the rutabaga. I'm going to mix the onions and peppers in with my eggs. And it'll be kind of like a, I don't know, scrambled omelet. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's going to be good. So now I'm going to eat. And um, I'm not going to eat on camera today because I got so much other stuff. It'll be an hour long. And we know the peanut gallery will be saying, hey, why you got to talk so much? It's 11 o'clock. And... Um, Got some ground beef. I'm going to season it up a little bit. And then we're going to try, Elizabeth suggested I try this um, pasta sauce. And um, so we're going to try it. But you know me, I still got to zhuzh up my meat. Let's put in some everything bagel seasoning, a little bit of Greek seasoning, um, a little bit of total seasoning, and then some roasted... Um, or toasted, whatever it is, um, uh, uh, garlic. So we're going to microwave this for two minutes first. Be right back. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and pull out one of my salads. You know, I made one. I made five of them. <coughs> so this one, got all the stuff on it, but I'm going to put a little bit of yellow squash. I like... I like yellow squash, cooked or raw. A little bit of roasted red bell pepper. I put the wet ingredients on either the day I eat it or the night before. Because you, you don't want your salad to be all slimy. And I'm adding some, um, some of these pickled cucumbers. These are the bread and butter ones that I made. So, um, okay. You know, I always like a little bit of that bread and butter on my salad. Okay. Now, um, we are going to, now I've got this, my, this is the dressing that I made up. It's, a fourth Polynesian dipping sauce, one fourth um, honey mustard dipping sauce, all G Hughes. And I think this will give it a fun added flavor. This is the pineapple ginger marinade. I think it'll give it a different little flavor to it. And I also then, so I do a fourth, a fourth, and then half of it water. I like my dressings watered down. 
just so that way it goes farther and it gets on all the veggies. Then I can use more of it. Okay. Now I'll get back. Use that. We're going to put um, one of these uh, Laughing Cow Wedges. This is the spicy cheese. So we're going to put one of these in here. All right, so let's see what a serving size of this is. Serving size is 125 grams and it's 50 calories. So, ooh, this is thick. Wow. Oh, shoot. Well, it's probably half of it. We'll see. There we go. I'll go with that amount. Oh, that's really good. Elizabeth suggested this. So that's interesting. It's a lot thicker than my than Rayo's and um, the dressing I use or the sauce that I use. It's thicker, and you get the same amount of of, of a same amount. And it's less calories, and it's thicker. Very interesting. Thank you for that, Elizabeth. Good tip. Okay, I added some seasoning to my salad because I forgot. Just whatever seasonings, whatever seasonings speak to your heart. Just, I like Greek seasoning on it. I like adobo seasoning. I like it all. All right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Salad. I stirred in my little cheese. And the Lucchini. I don't know how you say it. I got that sauce at my Walmart. So let's see what we think here. All right, got a big chunk of tomato in it. Hot, very hot. Mmm, that's good. Maybe I should take a smaller bite. Maybe I should blow on it. Mm hmm And an apple. And that's my lunch today. See you at supper. So supper tonight is going to be a burger in a bowl. So I've got my ground beef. I'm going to microwave this for two minutes. And these are some roasted vegetables. Um, looks like it's some yellow squash, onion, zucchini. I don't know. Whenever it's from. So I'll microwave these for about... Uh, two to three minutes. Yeah. With the ground beef. So I took this G Hughes burger sauce and I did about half of that and half water. I've used it so it's worked its way down. So this is like half of every, I, you know me, I water stuff down. So I'm going to use some of that in here. I'll do a zoop. And then we're going to use some G. Hughes ketchup. We're just G. hughes -ing it up tonight. So some G. Hughes ketchup. Uh-oh. And we're going to add... I'm going to add some of my bread and butter pickles to my bread and butter cucumbers. Along with some of the onion. So it'll be almost like a pickle relish to go with it. Just a few more of them veggies. All right. And then we are going to also add some of, a little bit of these are the pickled red onions that I had gotten. I bought these a while ago, so there is definitely sugar in them. So 
Um, read them before you buy them. I'm just, you know, going to finish them up because I got them. All right. So there's that. So this will be my burger bowl. And these are probably, I bet this is whenever I did that pork loin. So, like I said, then these are warmed up. Just a second, let me get my side. Y'all know darn well I forgot my seasonings. I'm actually, I want to put a little bit of this Kinder's wood fire garlic sauce on it. Or uh, seasoning on it. Give it like a woody tech flavor. I'm going to put a little bit of everything bagel seasoning. And a little bit of Greek seasoning. I'm going to taste the veggies. I have a feeling they might need salt. But I'm not going to. Let's just find out first. So let me mix these up here. And let's give it all a taste. Lord, don't even ask what's going on with this hair today. Because I do not know. Mm-hmm. Burger in a bowl. Delicious. Okay, the roasted veggies. Mm hmm. And fruit. And that's my supper. All right, tomorrow we're back to work, so I will see you then. Bye.